Pro Bowl is kind of a whatever type of thing as far as voting and, and whatnot. But you only had two guys on a pretty good defense. Were you, was your nose out of joint at all or not really? Uh, the last part. Well, were you like upset by that or, or not? No. Um, you know, I think uh, so sometimes that Pro Bowl thing can be a popularity vote. Uh, I think Coach had a really good message that you know the players' names are um, put to a higher standard with what you do in December and January. And so uh, we were a young team uh, that hasn't done a lot over the last few years, and we've got an opportunity in front of us to do something about it and and really cement our names in uh, history of the league, if you want to say it that way. But uh, but there's there's a lot more guys uh, deserving of than just two Pro Bowls, in my opinion. What are the challenges that you've been facing in these last seven games compared to the first where there's statistically a pretty stark difference in, in just the overall defense's production? Not that it's been bad. No, it, um, you know, there's uh, through, through attrition, uh, you know, you, you get guys, especially on the D-line, they've, they've gotten a lot of guys out. We've got to find ways to get a, uh, uh, more of a rotation going, uh, uh, especially for those big four um, but uh, uh, overall, you know, you're, we're, we're playing some elite quarterbacks. Um, and really, even last week, uh, I mean, it's, it was, we're, we're going pretty well there up until the, uh, that last drive. You know, we're playing some pretty good defense. I was, I was pumped for the guys. But, uh, you know, there's, from a statistical standpoint, it was almost historic over those first eight games. I almost feel like we kind of spoiled people. But, um, but you know we've still been playing good defense and doing all those things. It's uh, something that we gotta just continue to keep grinding, and getting better with the with the different guys that are coming in and out of the lineup. I don't know if I'm with answering your question. I, I mentioned how relentless he is. Um, with how much he's playing, what's what's the balance that you need to find in terms of making sure you're maximizing the snaps that he's out there while still I mean, getting getting him off the field and getting him a blow when he needs. You're you're 100 percent right. That's a challenge every week and. Uh, and so it's it's also coming from his teammates stepping up and when they're in there doing the right thing and, and getting things done, and uh, and you know starting in the D line room and with myself, Coach Kasarik, Coach Kiffin, making sure we're doing a good job getting them off the field and understanding when we can and can't get them off and see if we can steal 15 to 20 reps a game. And that goes for Buck, that goes for Armstead, um, because when it comes down to crunch time, those third downs, those critical situations, they need to be at their best. Uh, not saying that they're not, but. Uh, but even then, you, you just want all the everything they've got. And, uh, and if we can take 15 to 20 reps off of them in a game, that you hope that it would translate to a little bit more. Drive, why do you feel the defense wasn't able to close it out? And what do you regret most about that? Um, you know, the final drive, it, it, it goes back to any time, any, any time when you're in a two-minute situation, there's, there's, you've got to be precise as a defense. And um, and you look at some of the stuff that happened from a communication standpoint, um, uh, getting the call, uh, getting yourself aligned, understanding the situation. You had um, uh, uh, when you're in a pressure to make sure that you're playing as tight as possible so the quarterback doesn't have an out, or even in that last play of the game, making sure communication is on point so we can execute, uh, especially in a heightened environment when things are rolling. And, uh, and it wasn't our best. And uh, and and really, that's that, that's about the gist of it. When you look at communication and all that. Final play. So on the on the final play, you know, we we have uh, I won't go in the full schematic of it all, but he was uh, we're we're playing a uh, a bracket on Julio, and um, and there was just a miscommunication on how we were going to play it, and it didn't come out the way we wanted. So one more question: yeah. Were you satisfied with with the calls you made in retrospect, or was there one that you would have wanted back? Um, I, I from a, from a third down standpoint, I always look inward. Uh, you know, we were again we're we're trying to take care of Julio and bracket him and doing all doing all those things on all our third downs. They're uh, based on down and distance. Uh, could have coached it a lot better, uh, especially with a, a young group, uh, the young group that we had. We could have coached it a lot better. We could have been a lot more efficient because they were there. You know, they're catching it for four yards first on. It's like catch tackle. Mm -hmm. And they needed to be more catch tackle short of the sticks instead of at the sticks. And uh, and so just from a schematic standpoint uh, and the way it was coached, we could have been a lot better for our players. What's your confidence level that Richard Sherman will be able to play on Saturday? Um, 
You know what? Uh, if you talk to Sherm, he, he feels really good. Uh, but um, again, it, it, that goes to the uh, performance staff and how they handle him. And so as as long as they keep telling us that he can go and uh, the way he's progressing and when they give us a, the OK, he'll step on the field. Um, so that position uh, can be so isolated on the field as opposed to like a defensive lineman who's in traffic. Did, does a cornerback need to be closer to full health than another position on your defense? Uh, I, I think every position needs to be full health, to be honest with you. Uh, with what they're asked to do and all that, there's no hiding on defense. Um, corner, safety, D-line, doesn't matter. You can't hide. So you, you want to be at full strength. But obviously, at this point of the year, nobody's healthy. And uh, and so if you can make it out there, the, they're going to go. And these guys are such bad. They battle so hard. And they want to be on the field so so badly, especially at, with how the uh, with the season uh, winding down the way it is and the things that we have to play for. They all want to be on the field. So uh, sometimes, as a as a staff, we almost have to protect them from them. Um, but if if Sherman's healthy, he's, he'll roll. So. Just how far has he come from being here in his two years? I mean, obviously he was a little hindered in his the beginning of his first year. Sure. Um, his leadership skills have been unbelievable. Uh, him being a teammate has been unbelievable. And when you get to the from a player standpoint, he's always had the smarts. He's always been able to put himself in position. Uh, the difference between this year and last year is I think he's regained that step to go make plays and close on the ball and do the different things that he does. And uh, so he's. You know, from a healing standpoint, he's come a long way, and he's playing really good football. Probably not a guy that's known for his speed, but he also doesn't often get challenged deep. What, what is it about his game that allows him to to be a, a good defender or against deep passes when you think maybe physically he wouldn't be? For he is so smart uh, with regards to understanding football and understanding formations and when teams are about to go take a shot on him. Uh, is he a hundred percent on it? No, in terms of uh, playing the play, but throughout his entire history, if you look at all the interceptions he's had, I bet half of them have come where they've tried to go ball on him, and he just goes and takes it. I mean, he played receiver in college. His his depth perception is unbelievable. He becomes a receiver just as much as a receiver is. So, um, from a go ball standpoint, I think teams have become very scared to even go his way. Um, and because of it, it kind of shuts off half the field when it gets to that part. So he can he can start to play a little bit more aggressively and know that he's not always going to get challenged in that regard. Some guys talked about maybe overthinking things, uh, not just against the Falcons, but in past games, and getting back to basics. What is the key in terms of actually just getting back to basics and not maybe overthinking things each down? Just as a defense in general? Yeah, not necessarily looking at matchups and overthinking them, but internally maybe just overthinking things snap to snap. It, it is. You're, you... Uh, paralysis by analysis. Uh, you're always trying to make it as simple as you can for the players so they can go trigger and they can be as precise as possible. And uh, and you do that by trying to make sure from a, from a coaching standpoint, you eliminate as much communication as, uh, as you can so that way they can just go play. Line up and go play. Stop making checks. Stop using toolbox uh, checks and just go ball. And um, But at the same time, when you do that, you kind of leave yourself open to getting schemed up pretty good. So there's a balance that we got to find for the players. Uh, obviously, when you have a veteran group out there, uh, guys who've been through it, you can put a little bit more on them. Uh, when you have a younger group, you got to take a little bit off of them. But at the same time, you, there's, there's a balance. And so we've got to find it. The Rams here. Um, you know, with their line maybe being more vulnerable to the pass rush and Goff having a hand injury. Are you expecting them to try to come out, run the ball, and obviously you try to stop the run first. So how, how does that matchup look, and, and how's their running game? Their, their running game, if they can get it going, uh, is, is still good. I, I, I think they do a really good job in their zone schemes. They run a, uh, call it, I call it crunch. It's like a power without a puller. Uh, they run that scheme very well. So they, they've got a really good uh, run game, especially uh, crack toss. They, they do all that stuff. And so the jet sweeps. Um, the the key to that thing is just making sure that we're disciplined in our gaps, di uh, setting edges, knocking people back, um, penetrating with our D line, and making sure that we're doing a good job keeping um, keeping the back from being able to press the line of scrimmage, so he can roll back, and making sure that we're disciplined on the backside. And so, uh, it's always a challenge when you play the zone scheme uh, that they've got because they they're so efficient. Kyle and his offense are so efficient at running it, and they're so good at running it that it's very, very important that we're very disciplined in our fits and making sure that we understand what we're trying to get done uh, um, from a schematic standpoint. 
If you're able to get a healthy D Ford back, do you think this pass rush can, can get back to close to the levels that we saw in that first half? Um, for sure. I mean, D Ford's a unbelievable player. Anytime you can add someone like him, it, it ties everything together. Uh, the group, though, has been they've been performing uh, even with D on the bench uh, uh, being hindered. They've been performing. Uh, over the last three weeks, we played a team that only threw the ball, what, 15 times, I think it was. Uh, then we played Drew Brees, who gets rid of the ball faster than anyone in football. And then last week, uh, Matt Ryan turned into Russell Wilson with his getting out of the pocket and scrambling. I think he scrambled four or five times and got out of what should have been sacks. And so we, we're pleased with the way the rush is going. Uh, they, they missed on some opportunities to bring the quarterback down on a few occasions. But we just haven't had our opportunities based on the teams we've been playing. Um, but at the same time, they've got to understand it and continue to grind and keep going. And, but to answer your question, D Ford, obviously, he'd, he'd make it a lot more challenging for an offense to block us. Like, speaking of one of those that, you know, impressive, I know the pressure rate for Armstead, Buckner, and Bosa was still really good this yeah. weekend. The third, the last snap of the game where Armstead just ran over the guard. Yeah. Uh, that's what his 58th snap of the game. I'm wondering if the coaching staff says, wow, you know, even when he's tired, that, that, was, that was impressive. Yeah, they're 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 getting to the quarterback. They're still getting to the quarterback, and uh, and I think that's why. Like before that drive, uh, I think uh, Atlanta had 220 yards, and we're averaging about four and a half yards a play. So we we're playing really good defense. Uh, but again, it goes to critical situations, third down and two minute, where uh, the the execution has to be on point, and uh, which we've been very good in third down uh, this year, uh, and for the most part in two minute situations. But um, but to answer your question, Armstead, uh, any time those guys, there was a play earlier in the game where he just took a tight end and just took out the A, B, C, and D gap. Uh, and so Arm Armstead's been having a hell of a year. And so Tyler, Tyler Higby's had 300 yard games in a row. What has made so effective down the stretch, and how do you defend him? Uh, give, give me that question. Oh, um, he's they're doing a good job just getting him involved in the game uh, game plan. Obviously, they're they're making it a, a point to give him the football, and he's. Uh, he's been he's been balling. He's uh, uh, we we do have to be aware of where he is and understand that he's not just a decoy. Um, but uh, him and him and Goff right now have a good relationship and they're they're playing very well together. Robert, what sets Bosa apart from other rookies you've worked with? He's he is very polished. Uh, he's come in. He's already. I mean, the guy understands how to rush the passer. He's got great footwork. He's his his strength. His lower half is probably as strong as I've. Uh, is probably. One of the strongest at, in, in the league, not just out of rookies, and um, but his uh, his hand-eye coordination, especially when he's in close quarters, is some of the best I've ever seen. And uh, and he's just he's just uh, he's he's already beyond his years, and he's only going to get better. So he's that's probably the biggest thing that sets sets, sets him apart. Has the identity of the Rams offense changed at all? More of a two tight end attack. It was so purely eleven personnel last year. Uh, they, you know, they mix in both uh, from that standpoint, personnel standpoint. They are a little bit different, but um, they still have a very clear philosophy on how they handle things. It's still very obvious what they're – not obvious what they're trying to do, but it's obvious from a phil uh, philosophical standpoint. Um, they're still predicated on the run. I know they haven't had a ton of success, but they're still going to try to run the football. Uh, they're still going to try to blow the top off the coverage and still take their shots, and they're still going to try to play efficient drop back football. So it's very clear what they try to do, and uh, it's going to be, it's always a challenge when you play them. What have you seen from Jimmy Ward the last few weeks, and do you think he's maybe carved out a role longer term after, after this year? Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy's been playing fantastic football. Uh, he's so versatile in what he can do. He's one of the best cover guys in football. He's one of the best guys in the middle uh, in football. He just does a really good job. He's, he's relentless. He's got um, – uh, he plays like a linebacker's mentality. I mean, he just wants to run and hit people. Um, but as far as the future, that, that one's more of a question for John and Kyle. All right, everybody. Thanks, everybody.